सर ऑफ सर आई विल्स आई से वन सर ऑफ सर बट या सो थैंक यू सो मच सर सर ऑफ फॉर कमिंग हेयर एंड इट्स इट्स रियली माय प्लेजर आई गॉट टू नो फ्रॉम पीयूष दैट यू आर यू नो व्हाट वी कॉल इन आर टर्म्स चिल प्रोफेसर समवन हु इज हु इज वेरी मच फ्रेंडली विद द स्टूडेंट्स एंड and then uh, obviously it make me happy to know that the professor is actually going to be very friendly in the conversation and then we will be sharing and uh, discussing lot of things and especially for taking out time and the team uh, the audience that you will be having this time will be very different from the scientists you meet or the already the bachelor's master student phd students they are all class 11th or 12th students and uh, many of these people uh, either might be fascinated by mo- watching movies for science or watching mm-hmm. chandrayaan or 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 maybe yeah. genuinely having passion to actually do research and that is one of the things we also uh, guide them uh, both both mm-hmm. aspects of coming into research so w- which should be the right career options for them and uh, whether they should consider it or not and uh, so we have started actually this series as uh, uh bringing various scientists and professors who can share about their journey because then we can connect that uh, how did this person decide that to come into research and from which background did you come from and now you're a professor at Isa uh, Pune so so this is the re- we started this series and and it's been i think very helpful for all the students so thank you no, so it's a wonderful idea it's a wonderful idea thank you for having me yeah my pleasure sir so uh, so i'll start with asking one basic question that where were were you brought up and how was your childhood like uh, so i am i am actually a native punikatar uh, i was born in pune uh, but my dad used to uh, work in the middle east so he worked in the united emirates for a while so till i was in four standard i was there and then we returned to kesh so i did most of my later schooling like uh, you know middle school fifth standard to 10th standard in pune um then you know college also so the basic undergraduate course was all in pune i i went to ferguson college where i did bachelor's after that for my phd then i then i went abroad uh, to a place called gurs university so this is in new jersey uh i was pretty fortunate so the, the kind of work i got into in my phd so i am a experimental particle physicist so there the, the lab was actually near shikha so shikha was about a, three from from new jersey from rutgers so so in phd i got to spend half the time at chicago half the time uh, in new jersey so that was nice it gave me a different perspective got to see a new place uh, and then for my post doc i moved to california i was there for like uh, three four years at lawrence berkeley national lab and then i moved to isa pune uh, in fact last week i graduated 10 years at isa pune so uh, it's oh. a long time um, in this brief especially about the question today i have been part of the isers admission committee from 2016 to 2020 mm-hmm. so i you know those three years they taught me a lot about how mission sun in india uh, what are the challenges so so that was a lot of fun in the last couple of years i was also uh, i'm also the co pi of two pedagogical groups so where what we are trying to do is uh, improve the teaching skills of school teachers and college teachers you know by bringing in things that are aligned to this new education see so you know critical thing hands on activity based learning so i to uh, have some teachers and we try to do this in one of the projects we are actually working in three sites now maharashtra bihar rakhan and uh, we are hoping that we can raise money to sort of for cross more places yeah so so is that also like something we were doing as a student that we were doing our own research and also starting up sayastra so is that also that's it's kind it's kind of like that so uh, you know my main research is to do particle physics uh, but then there is a lot of work that needs to be done in the teaching sector as, as you guys are doing it's it's wonderful initiative Thank even you. the size of india more people who get into the the better it is and and is that also a, a initiative of a government or your own initiative with so it's actually a very interesting idea so the the school teacher program that we have is a joint initiative between the government department of science and technology dst uh, and actually for companies so for private companies so there is tata technologies british council royal society of chemistry and uh, what is the fourth uh, there is also tata trust who is going to be on board 
so it, it's quite interest to have this public private part thing um, it's a little bit of a headache for us to deal with four or five different bodies but they are very motivated they all bring in nice ideas and so on so that's nice like you know it's easy to work with a bunch of people who care about something yes um, so that, that's kind of the model it's not just government so it's also a lot of private industry uh, great i i didn't know about that i i saw your so the program is called i rise i mean so i can send you the link later hi rise i rise i r i s e acha i i acha it's like i rise of the i ha ha correct okay uh and and sir so uh sorrow uh where, where was your uh, schooling like in pune and and what was so your my experience that made you to come to science so uh my school was actually east here uh, it was like in right so if you miss the local to school schools in third so i ended up joining the school uh, in next called shikshan mandir uh, that time it was a new school in the sense that that building had just been made you know they were still putting up all of the construction and so on it was also there was only one division in purpose one of the benefits was that uh, was that the teachers could pay a lot of attention to the students and uh, you know every teacher knew the students one on one and they kept track of what you were doing and this type of broadly has a lot of advantages uh, when the teacher knows you if you you connected to you they keep an eye on you or they nurture you in a personal way in this aspect they don't give you generic advice but they give you advice that tailored for you uh, one of the things in, in my school but also at home was that um, I have a mother, for example, who uh, who indulges me when I ask why. So when I was growing up, I used to ask a lot of why questions. Most students do. Uh, typically, you know, it is about simple things too. Rat ko na khun mat kato. So they do ask why. Uh, or you know, or you know, don't cut your hair on the Saturday. Ask why. So, uh, but my mom actually encouraged me to argue. She she you know should argue with. Me. Something that she would be willing to have me argue with her to present the case, why it would be this way, why it shouldn't be this way, and that was really nice because uh, if I wanted to win with her, that meant that a I had to find some facts so that I could argue better, and uh, see this is in the world when there is no Google, so you cannot like Google something. So you know we had a set of encyclopedias in the library, or you ask somebody ki why is this, why is that. The other thing is you also tend to think about your arguments. Like you tend to think, "Hey, how can I convince this person?" Uh, and it's quite a uh, exercise to do that. Like you, you, your own ideas sort of become clear. Sometimes you understand that you're arguing just for the sake of arguing. Like you know, you don't really have a point. So all of the things uh, one learns a lot. Of the school was nice there in that sense because it was a smaller school. We were allowed to have a lot of these conversations with teachers outside the classroom. Um, This is something that uh, you know an organization like yours. It's exactly the kind of thing that you want. Students are getting like these personal tours. You know, you get them in certain subsets. You can talk to somebody. You can sort of tell them what are the challenges you are facing. So that that I think helps. So uh, yeah, I was very happy that I got that chance. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the students uh, since now it's become so much competitive. that every student uh, in fact has you know mental breakdown in the process of uh, yes. preparation for these entrance exam so many times students would call from from initial state state stealth like from last two years i would uh, take the calls of the students who would literally break down during the calls cry with me they were like bhaiya marks nahi aa rahe i am getting 18 20 marks out of 180 200 marks in iser aptitude test and then oh there's a lot of pressure yeah, yeah, there is a lot of pressure yeah so uh, me or my team members all of us would take those calls we would calm them down and and the best part would be i think the electricity is gone here okay that's okay the the, <laughs> the best part would be that now they got the iser so the same student right. who were crying that i am getting just 18 marks in the mock test now i have i have got the iser right and and uh, and uh, th- that makes us happy you know that makes yeah, us uh, yeah. even work harder that okay we are doing Correct. something Correct. useful so uh, this true I mean, to see somebody you will succeed is a reward right i mean you feel really good when when somebody you work with succeeds that that's really nice true uh, so now now that brings me to the question that how was your 11th and 12th like 
because after that phase again you would have to decide are you getting a good institute and all that so uh, in in maharashtra abhi bhi hai but even then there is this concept of junior batch so that that is that uh, up until 10th standard i was in my school but in 11th 12th i moved to actually a big college so i did my 11th 12th also from ferguson college now one of the nice things there was that you know your exposure was up all of a sudden there lot of things happening and you know you are very young matlab all the bsc and everybody is senior you but they have clubs there will be some tour exhibition there is something or the other going and that is nice it motivates you 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 know you can see ki in two years i can participate in this but you also get to learn you get to see what of the people enjoy um all of us coaching in 11th and 12th so even i went to a coaching class but uh, the, there was a person there uh, professor pandit karke the so he uh, was actually retired from another college in pune and he used to teach physics and he was an exceptional teacher exceptional in the sense that you know he allowed you to do something uh, his classes were a lot of fun i remember in one class he comes in and the people were a bit bored because subject i forget what it was maybe maybe mechanics or something he said chalo today we'll do some time pass he said i have a chocolate any person in class can recite gabbar singh ka pura dialogue we get this chocolate and uh, and remark please so <laughs> at that time i had that whole dialogue by heart you know he asked kitne aadmi the and then he goes on are you samba kitne aadmi the and then you know golaiga no etc etc and i won the chocolate and, and that was really quite exciting it made me realize that you know a coaching class or any sort of class or any sort of education that doesn't have to be devoid of fun matlab it is okay to take one class see he didn't care he said you know kuch physics nahi padhenge that's no problem he made sure that you know we are enjoying that environment that we are there chalo theek hai you don't feel like working you do something you know you then tell some story you give something else that helps it to sort of reduce the pressure you see that it is okay to enjoy what you are doing or rather it is important to enjoy if you are getting stuck if you are getting bored you know there is a lot of pressure it's okay to take a step back really okay today i am going to relax a little bit i need this time for myself that's actually quite uh, quite nice um, so i thought i think that that was a good experience uh, to have uh, in level 12 uh, of course see one of the other things is a lot of my friends wanted to do engineering so uh, they all had to study much harder you know you have to get this pcm ka score up and you get a good engineering admission and you know entrance exams uh, i sort of already decided that i wanted to do a, a bachelor of science and of course at that time there no icers or anything so uh, it was just a local college so that that also reduced the pressure quite a bit since i knew that i wasn't really uh, having to compete with these engineering people i could afford to do a lot of things better this is not for example that actually my overall percentage is a lot better than a lot of my friends they they physics chemistry maths master better but overall i think i i sort of did better i could afford to pay attention to everything that's being taught to me um, that's always good i think uh, so curriculum are curriculum are designed with something in mind it's really not nice to say ki of this entire curriculum i will only focus on this because that is what matters baki sab you know it matters aisa nahi hai all of that education well that is important even in six you want somebody who's 1200 pass to understand ki civics kaisa hai how how does the law become you know how does parliament become law all these are important things so uh, that's nice that uh, was an opportunity there at that great uh, uh, reg- regarding the uh, thing you mentioned about your teacher so the same thing we also tell here now we we in our sayastra we are like you forget about the exam you forget about the iser aptitude test exactly. next exam many exactly and in fact many times when people would be uh, facing problems we would i would personally tell them you take break you don't study for next one day whole until you feel good uh, because right. because everywhere they are being taught they have, they have to study for 12 hours 16 hours 16 yeah. like, that is insane yeah. nobody can survive yeah. nobody can survive <laughs> that yeah and then you are not actually understanding anything in your body it's just you're a robot and that true part. so uh, and and the mentors also we have at our team you know they are also uh, uh, unique creatures so one of the mentor yeah. physics mentor he he dropped out of iit kharagpur or kanpur i think one of the iits after first year and he is now in cmi 
and he he would teach a vector sticking example of girlfriend boyfriend your home yeah. crushes home <laughs> perfect i mean that's the that's the point that you connect the subject to your everyday experiences like these are not abstract notions in in a, they mean something Yeah, so he he would say that you could have gone to school directly. That is the vector end result. But you're taking a path to your crush's home, then going here. So this is the triangle of addition. Nice. That's very nice. <laughs> and and students literally never miss his classes because correct because of the way he teaches. So uh, yeah. So coming back to your story. So then th- that was your bachelor's, right? Then uh, what about masters? Uh, so actually, uh, after my bachelor's, I enrolled in a master's program here in uh, Pune University. But I also simultaneously applying for PhD programs. So I got admission to a PhD program uh, after one year. So I, I then I just moved to a PhD. I, I didn't finish my master's here in SPBU in Pune University. Uh, I just moved. I just started my PhD directly. So I was already abroad in the US. Okay. okay. and and how did you then get to know about the whole process of getting to abroad uh so at that time i think it still exists there was this uh, coaching class in a called delhi books academy uh hmm. it, it was interesting because see traditionally most b people like they do b or tech then they go for ms abroad and so they had coaching class they were teaching for the exam the gre exam theek hai but the rest of the support the mentoring and everything was actually completely from the point of view of uh, engineering so i got like a couple of things that were really bad advice one person told me ki are you don't have a publication for position nahi mila which is just completely false i think it has you know that's really not true one other person told me something uh, i mean there are other things also people discourage uh, uh, ki science you know iske liye kaun jata hai what is the point and those sort of things uh it's interesting uh, that you know having the right exposure around you is very important i mean i'm very thankful to the class they made a lot of the steps of going abroad a lot easier this was a time when internet was just starting up so that means that you know i could really look up university website at home but the applications that they sent were all paper applications you know i had like you know bible I had twelve envelopes. Each of them had copies of my recommendation letter in sealed envelopes, my transcript, my statement, everything. And I printed this out. And so, if you find envelopes which will not tear, which will even if they get wet, okay, so plastic lined and whatnot, and you send this off. Um, of course, now we we are in a sort of more convenient uh, situation. Uh, so, in that sense, for the for the process of applying, the class really helped. You know, they listed out how much money it takes. Fees, how much they are, so that was nice. The overall advice, however, for uh, getting to a PG, you know, how how should you choose a program? What you should do? That was a bit light. Um, I have one professor in Ferguson, uh, Dr. Dagadi. She had a lot. She had done students before, so she you know, said, "This is how you look for good programs and so on." But for me, I think the advice was a bit lacking. Uh, this I see has come in a changed a lot over the last ten years. Now, because of neither the ISA, IIC, and so on, having undergraduate programs, a lot of students either they do their thesis abroad or even if they manage to go for PhD, that network work really nice. We have a lot more experience of people who can not just tell about PhD, but you know, having other things and so on. So you have a lot of these alumni that you uh, plan on. So that that is a change for for the better. Um, that was thing that I maybe got a little less of. So I applied to. So for example. I, One good advice I could have gotten from somebody was to finish your MSc and then go. Um, somebody could have said that, but nobody told me that. So I said, "Okay, I, I, you know, I just left it halfway and I and I did the PhD." Now, if you finish your PhD, no problem, and then it's okay. But if you don't finish, then you you should have a master's to fall back on. I think that mm-hmm. always helps. Um, so that advice I didn't really get at that point. Uh, then so you uh, moved to US Rutgers University uh, directly after your bachelor's. and what was the course uh, integrated msc phd uh, no so in the us it, it is directly a phd program hmm. um, different different university studying is different so at rutgers what they was you have to give like a qualifying exam which happens one year after you join 
you get to a time pass then you take it after one year if you don't pass it then take one year later if in like two or three attempts you don't clear it then they tell you ki okay you take a masters at will so, so that's what it was if you pass the exam then they say ki work to a phd masters likhe kya karoge uh, so so that was all true however i had friends who had gone to other universities where they you know sort of got msc after they finished their coursework so it sort of varies quite a bit then for phd how did you decide uh, the subject and the topic so uh, if you are from pune uh, at least around that time so around 2000 uh, ayuka if you know the place is in yes, yes. pune so there is this indian center for astrophysics they they do a lot of outreach and at that time there was nobody else to counter that outreach so everybody think we wanted to do astrophysics and that was how it was physics can never trust uh, so if i wanted to do astronomy and astrophysics that's why i went you know, to the us that's what i was looking for but after going there i i thank uh, you know i thank the law thank my staff and i had i kept in mind in the sense that a professor there he was indian he had known in chatter the years for a long time so he had some department in team but he came and started talking to me asked me what your interest is and i told him i like to code a little bit you know quantum mechanics may i like it and that and he it was a, he ended up having a one hour long talk with me at the end of it he said that look i have positions uh, you know do you want to try this for like two three weeks so this particle physics master physics and you know, i feel really thankful today that I, yes i'll try i didn't have the you know the, the blinders on you know i want to do as to i want to do only as to that that i think is really a problem as a nikun you should not do that so i was willing to try that out and in two months i was in love with the with the work but not with the subject necessarily but also with the day to day work you you every day you want to go to office you know you want to go there and do something people the group was very supportive the advisor was a very nice person but uh, the work was very interesting and and then that sort of changed me from astrophysics to particle physics i mean it was very nice uh, this thing now uh, is a big thing right it, like all of us uh, you should explore you know students should explore and they should get exposed I feel embarrassed that when I finish my BSc, maybe I would not be able to name, like, say, ten subfields of physics. Uh, so today, when people, you know, students in first year will come and they will tell me, "Yeah, I want to do string theory." That's usually very common. Or I want to do some something specific. It's good to have a like, goal, something specific, but at the same time, this is capital limit. Unless you can name like ten subfields of science, you know, at least utna to exposure you should have. You should know what else is out there. then you can be free to pop your mind uh, that texture i think is very important is that mic getting disturbed the the lead uh so you, yeah, yeah. better now yeah 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 okay ah, yeah so you were saying that people should open up and uh, actually have a broader so i i i think it's really important to not decide your career path too early in the sense that you are going to be working on a subject or you know whatever it is for the next 30 40 years what is the rush to get into you might as well explore or get some exposure so that you are better able to understand what you want what you want to do for the rest of your life you know what it is if you do every day you excited you want to get up in the morning and rush to work and so and if you try four things then you will know better what you would like what you don't like And it's not good to to say I want to do something or even try. You should try. True. So that is how you transitioned from the astrophysics to particle physics. To particle physics. And yeah. and as you always say that, uh, as you said, uh, you always would get people who would be actually motivated for astrophysics or a particular string theory. Maybe maybe let it be the source because of which they join it. But at the end they they exactly. have. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I mean, whatever motivates you, that is good. So right. if it's making you do science, by all means, that's the yeah. nice thing. Uh, so, so then, how was your experience during during your PhD? How many years it was, and how you progressed? And now, d- you did postdoc as well there. Yeah, I my PhD took six years, um, of which about two and a half years I like I said I spent in uh, at the lab in Chicago. It's called Fermi Lab. Um, so I finished six years. There. which is the norm okay. that, that's roughly all how long it took then for my postdoc at the four year postdoc that was at Lawrence Berkeley National Lab um, so not only did i i mean i changed institute i also changed experiment so from this fermi lab i moved to the cern lnc experiment called atlas so then i was working on atlas for uh, three four years there atlas um, you know cern the europe one 
Yeah, the right. Europe Sun one. Achha. So even right now, I am a member of the CMS experiment at uh, Sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the competitor experiment of Atlas. So for my post on Atlas, and then when I shifted to ISR Pune, I joined CMS. In, in fact, me and there's another professor at ISR Pune, Sima Sharma. We we started the CMS group at uh, ISR Pune. So uh, that was quite fun to you know, so different chance to start something from scratch. Uh, it's always nice to have a senior around to guide you. You know, that if they're not around. A lot of things that uh, seem stressful. I mean, they are not really stressful. You just but you feel stressed. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, I read on your website as well as CMS that uh, some muon solenoid. Uh, can can you please Compa- uh, explain? Compa- yeah. uh, can you please explain a bit about your research? What is the uh, thing? So uh, uh, I am an experimental particle physicist. Uh, in simplest terms, if this has to be explained, idea is that you know you take two protons. You collide them at a very high energy, so energy e equals m c square. So from this energy, you can make new particles. I mean, you can make old particles and you can make new particles also. So what you do is you smash them together. Whatever comes out, you study that, and from from studying that, you try to see if there are any new particles or or you measure the properties of existing particles. You measure the rates or the mass of some particle and so on. So that's in short, roughly what my research is like. So ultimately, you. Uh... Find try to find out mass or such properties of uh, of the of the fundamental particles. Fundamental particles and hmm. so basically the questions to answer are what are the fundamental particles? How long can you keep breaking something apart? If I break apart an atom, I get a nucleus, electron. If I break apart nucleus, I get proton, neutron. Break apart proton, I get quarks. So the idea of how long can I keep breaking this? What are the fundamental particles which cannot be broken anymore? The like electron and the right atom is fundamental. Quark we think is fundamental. So What are these fundamental particles, and then what are the different forces between them? So regularly, you know, chemistry or biology, it's like magnetic attraction. Uh, then of course there is radioactivity, is the weak force and strong force. So what are all these different different kinds of interactions? So these are the two things that particle physics tries to study. What are the fundamental particles, and what are the forces between them? So uh, here I always used to have this question that okay, you are trying to uh, find out new one. particles but how long i think these experiments are being done for over a decade now right so but how many times like are you getting always getting new new particles or maybe at some point uh, you're uh, getting okay this is it so uh, okay so the higgs boson was found in 2012 uh, aside from that there have been lot of new sort of mesons and baryons on which are like bound states uh, they are less let's say they are very interesting from a physics point of view But they are less interesting from the uh, general public point of view. Like they, they are not as much shaking as discovering the Higgs. Uh, in fact, it is uh, a challenge in the last, especially five to ten years, that we the rate of learning new things has gone down a little bit. Uh, we have a lot of theoretical and you know reasons to think that there should be new, uh, but so far we have not succeeded in finding it. So it is interesting that that's always a good time. I mean, it's that you know when you sort of uh, are stuck with a problem and you don't know what to do now. There are if the path is clear, then it's clear. But right now the path is actually not clear. So it's very exciting to, to think of that. So that means that now trying to find something is completely based on how smart the scientists are to come up with a new idea that will help you. Uh, mm-hmm. So the path isn't clear, and, and that's where we are. Okay. And and what is the reason that Higgs was called? Uh, God particle and and so on so so many things. So actually, that's a very interesting story. So, uh, Leon Lederman used to be the Fermi Lab uh, director, and the search for the Higgs boson had been going on for many many years. A lot of resources had been spent. So Leon Lederman wrote a book about the search for the Higgs boson. This was a long time ago, in the eighties or nineties, I think. And uh, what he wanted to call the book was uh, the title of the book that he proposed was the Goddamn particle. That was the name that he suggested. He sent a draft of this to his editor. Now his editor, you know, this is in the U.S. where a large fraction of the population is religious. So the editor said, "Ki if you name the book God Damn Particle, then unnecessary people will not take it." So the editor suggested, "Let's drop the damn. Let's just call it the God Part." That's how the name stuck. It really has no no bearing in actual God or any anything anything like that. Just the name that stuck. Oh wow, interesting. and and but but unfortunately we see many youtube you know shorts or videos connecting spirituality with the god particle then physics then quantum yeah. mechanics 
<laughs> that's really silly of them okay so uh, then uh, after doing your post op there how how did you come to aisa pune so uh, at some point i think uh, you know you as scientist you look for jobs i mean if the job is in south africa you go to south africa if the job is in brazil you go to brazil i got a little fortunate uh, i knew that that, that nicer actually had, had a cms scope they had paid for for a while so i was thinking that you know i should apply there as well uh, pune is my home so i was actually visiting pune uh, when i thought okay i might as well visit and see you know if they're interested uh, at that point the professor sunil mukhi had just joined us in pune there were a couple of other people there i went and talked to them they were interested in the field they were like okay we can start this uh, you know why don't you apply formally and then we we'll interview you once so more and actually that uh, was nice the environment at these places uh, was good i mean you are from nice so you should, you know this now it's a very collegial atmosphere like the department is they are all you know it's friendly you go in there people to you the respect there isn't a lot of senior junior less hierarchy that was quite nice for me so uh, also it was a new institute and it was just cut up when i interviewed actually i said it was transit campus the then voice is been breaking a bit some sometimes so uh, yeah let me repeat so, uh, no no even i said it was in the transit was then no even is now, it better is, no no okay i don't know what is could be could be some network issues mm-hmm. it, it seems as if there is electrical uh, zig 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 that kind of stuff what is is it my phone No, not not. I'm not sure. It it would be because of some phone or radiation. But uh, please try now. Let's yeah. see. Okay, so is this better now? Seems better. Yeah. Seems okay. Uh, so what I was saying is that Pune was also a new institute then, and uh, while it is challenging to join a new institute, it is also quite refreshing because you get a chance to to sort of see things happening from the beginning. You get a chance to to influence things. and uh, that to me seemed like a great chance and of course it is in my hometown so that all worked out well so uh, it was easy i moved back uh, and and when did you join uh, yeah so that was 2013 uh, 10 years ago 2013 yeah yeah and and uh, you, you said you just celebrated your uh, one decade at aisa yeah pune yeah congratulations <laughs> on saying thank you yeah uh and how does it feel to be at aisa pune now and how how was your journey at aisa pune it's very different i mean uh, from the initial years i i mean because of my anniversary right now i got a chance to look back on these things uh, the institute has changed a lot of buildings some of the sports complexes come up you know the mess building is nicer uh the student strength has gone quite a bit Uh, we have gone from having classes of about 100 120 to like 240 250 you know, it's become bigger some things have changed for the better i mean a lot of students is nice because the campus life is active and dancing uh, some things are a bit risky i sometimes so because you have a lot of students uh, the same problems that plague identities will also come here in the sense that you know over competitiveness a lot of stress among students a lot of in the cgpa which are things that don't really matter as much as the students I mean, it matters it matters very little there are a lot of other things that matter a lot more uh, so so that is a little bit of a thing that has changed in these ice as the institute grows we have to keep an eye to ensure that that doesn't become a problem uh, mm-hmm. yeah as as anything is scales the quality becomes a question like we have to ensure may make some mechanisms absolutely. to Yeah. That's exactly the right way to put it. The scaling up is just to maintain yeah. quality. Yeah. <laughs> the same problem we had when we were so we were four four teachers for this class of maths why of 50 or 100 students we knew everyone by names or uh, right. we would call them by names we would know where they are coming from uh, you know good family background bad background what kind of influence they are having now there are 200 students or 500 students so <laughs> so so for that now we came up with some mechanisms like we will additionally have some mentors who would be assigned to every student and have a bit of at least personal touch and talk anything apart from the academics they they would talk random stuff anything that is good oh, that's really nice that's a really wonderful idea so uh, like today saturday every saturday we have a uh, schedule for podcast like this and sunday that is tomorrow we'll have a session 
that would be not about academics at all that would be about yeah for one hour we would discuss who is doing what uh, what problems are you facing uh, still people people will ask questions bhaiya revision nahi ho raha ye schedule banaya time table follow nahi ho raha we would say hamara bhi nahi hua tha kisi ka nahi hota hai exactly <laughs> so we, exactly and and so whole week we will not share our problems we would teach like like a teacher but on sunday we would share ha mere life mein bhi ye dukh hai main kya karu tum batao so when i would come and take the session so i would be like guys i am also very worried they would first i listen to all their problems i'll be like okay tell me all the problems they'll take then i'll tell them my problems now i'll say you tell no, me no this, this is really it is really wonderful i mean the the chance that these students are having to have this mentorship it, it's quite remarkable there is nothing like somebody where you can have an open conversation you know and that's really it's quite wonderful so sure, let, let's hope uh, things go well and uh, uh, i wanted to ask now regard since uh, at this 10 year journey on this 10 year journey you must have done lot of things you would have tried lot of things and one of them was iris right so what are all the projects that you tried and how did you then land up at this iris thing and please explain more. um so i have always been interested in outreach uh, so whether so one kind of outreach is where i talk about my research uh i am also actually interested in outreach not just with uh, school college children but also adults in the sense that um, see i work at a government institute the grants that we get come from government which means ultimately they come from people paying taxes so if in the outside world there is an accountant or you know there's a lawyer or you know there is you know, some service one who's paying tax it is their tax that runs the institute that you know that we use money for research and so on so i kind of feel that i would like to talk to them to explain to them you know this is what kind of research is happening in india uh, a lot of times i think that is where we sort of maybe fall behind the world a little bit we do a lot of incredible incredible things across india yeah? there's a lot of good research happening and that happens at the highest levels but we don't talk about it as much i mean our newspapers don't highlight it as much but even the scientists they don't go to talk about it uh, sometimes they try but then they make it too technical in which case people get bored for me it has been a, a motivation how can i go talk to adults and explain to them that this is the kind of research we do see i'm talking to an accountant he doesn't have to understand all the details of my work he need to broadly understand okay this is what the field is this is what you're doing in the same way some fields are easy to explain if he's working in say cancer research then you know at least the connect is easier i am trying to fix cancer work may not be clear but at least the connect is there Uh, so i wanted to bring that connect to at least part of physics uh, mm-hmm. within india so i did a lot of those activities in my first few years um for example i gave a talk in marathi to to a bunch of uh, adults and, and that was challenging because you know it's difficult to have all scientific language in marathi so i, I could do that so i used a lot of english words but the, the speaking was marathi so that was nice while doing a lot of these things uh, we sort of realized that one of the challenges that teachers in schools face is that they want to do good stuff they want to explain things to students and keep them engaged but sometimes they don't have the necessary skills or they don't have the necessary time so in this ice project what we are doing is we are we train teachers we give them some techniques some tools and what not that is aligned to their syllabus see a teacher's primary goal is how can i finish the syllabus because they have to do that that's their you know priority number 1 if we can intervene and give them things from the syllabus that you know you can try to teach them this way or here is an activity and in the questions that the, the school can you know evolution somehow or uh, explain like reagents how working chemistry or explain how a motor works these are kind of things that we are trying to do to the teachers and, and the teachers love this because their work is reduced they are motivated they get to see the new techniques that are being invented at different different places around the world it's done in a format that they can pick up understand and implement in the class students all over india are always very you know they're excited they want to do things all students to tell them the technique they tell the things out of that so that is actually the connect that we are trying to do this uh, idx project that has been happening for the last two or three years and, and that's been very rewarding for me Um, I've had a chance to sort of talk to teachers from remote rural places, in Maharashtra, in Bihar, and so on. Uh, uh, phenomenal. I mean, 
it's phenomenal the challenges these school teachers have still they manage to to get things done so, mm-hmm. it's interesting great uh, in in fact uh, now when we started doing in lucknow so in fact the awareness about the science is very much good in odisha in bhubaneswar but in lucknow <laughs> when my area, i am from mp a small village in mp and so in these reasons everyone is after upsc or army civil Are services my, my own family does not understand properly what i am doing right now in fact but i try to explain them when i was in nizer they used to think i am making atom bombs or <laughs> i am in you know bhava atomic research center and uh, making rockets like abdul kalam things like that so uh, but yeah so here when we go to schools uh we actually struggle in fact to get a session because the school teacher or the receptionist they don't understand they're like are you another coaching like uh, by juice or uh, you're trying to get the data of the students you're like no sir no ma'am we don't want the data correct <laughs> if we want the data anyway like literally data is unfortunately being sold for all the schools and everything so then we would uh, somehow get access to the principal who would finally understand how is this beneficial to the students and then we would do sessions so i mean everything is some exposure if the students know that something is out there that's when you can aspire to to do it you don't even know if this is an option how will they do so and and what what currently students uh, the science student 11 12th know right now is isro because of chandrayaan and so so much uh, you know masala of the indian media and social media that is that is one thing they know and the, already they know about iit or aims but but because of that there is about 22 lakh applications for neat exam and the seats are 50000 yeah. so 15 yeah. lakh 12 lakhs for je but the seats are again 50000 1 lakh so the remaining uh, 20 lakh 21 lakh student they just end up in some private colleges for Correct. for either btech or bsc and, and some of them everyone is nobody knows actually what to do because because they were told uh, what why was told personally was you do good in 10th you your life will be set i i got 96% then 12th you you do good your <laughs> life will be set i got 95% then i asked my parents what to do after 12th they didn't know anything they, my parents are farmers so then i asked i asked some of my cousins or some relatives they said you should crack je examination you got good percentage in 12th then i was like what is je you didn't tell me <laughs> then when i saw the questions of je i was not able to solve anything then i was like then i should have solved this instead of working for board exam getting 95 marks exactly right exactly so so yeah. so just like me there are lakhs crores of these students almost yeah and and they are they are just being like like a sheep so they are just just being told about something and everyone just up running after that they yeah. are being herded towards that you're yeah, like sheep they are being herded towards a specific thing yeah, yeah. and and just uh, it's it's all whatever one thing someone glamorizes everyone is just running after it so uh, one of yeah. and when we started you know sayastra if if we would make some good content like some good educational content it really does not work much we we would not get views we would not get interest of people they no nobody cares what what they care is bollywood so what what they so i would make the same content if i add if i will add or think that okay in this movie rithik roshan told this dialogue to his girlfriend that his the 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 golden ratio of a beautiful thing is 1.618 but your face is 1.2 so you're not beautiful and that reel got viral within 20 days so we have almost 23 lakh views now right so th- those th- those experience now have given us experience uh, ideas that okay we will explain the concept we are doing but let's make it more fun and try to add a bit of yeah exactly. to reach your <laughs> your you know downstream yeah. students that's the yeah, yeah. so uh, that is the approach now we are having and at the end obviously we have to tell them okay if you are interested then only come here don't come for masala right correct that's yeah. right that's yeah. right so that is the approach we are having uh, so is there anything else apart from your journey so far you would like to share ah uh, no not really i mean uh, i don't know maybe one thing that i'd like to say uh, one of the things that i i mean students for example and we will take requests of course but uh, some things that didn't know for example in level 12 you, you should be outgoing you should be part in many, many things uh, don't like sort of hide yourself uh, out from the world uh, 
that age is awkward you know you, you're not really sure you know your confidence sometimes is high low it really depends on notices you are you know all of those things uh, but you should take part in it the other thing is if the system is not challenge you enough then you should challenge yourself uh, what i mean by this is when i did when i was doing see there was no semester break so you had exams only once a year uh, and also that, that that is a very low threshold agar if there is exam only once year you study for it you no know, much later most of the year you are not doing something so what i did in my first year i actually enrolled for a diploma in scientific computing it was some evening class i learned some visual basic some c++ so on it was not that the diploma has helped me gain anything in life but that value addition that at that point i got exposed to some programming i learned some techniques i made some other friends got another exposure that i think is really important that you have to find things that you yourself if your classes and what not is to see or boring find something else to apply um other thing is also to not feel a lot of regret i mean uh, you know you you make a decision at a point in time based on the best knowledge you have you know you've heard something you do some analysis you make a decision Two years later, you grow up as a person. You learn a lot more things and not. So you, you can judge your past actions based on what you know today. At that point, whatever you knew, you you take a good decision then. Today, don't stress about lost opportunity or I should have done that. I should have done this. You know, that's okay. That that past is done. Today, you decide what is good for you today, and you move on from there. And I think these are things that I would want to share with students. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so we already have crossed over forty minutes. Uh, now uh, let us see if we have some questions of the students. Uh, there are some students saying uh, they have met you three times offline. Okay. Pradeep, oh, that's nice. Pradeep Russell, yeah, and um, help them. so so mostly people uh, people again a uh, few of the students are asking about je and neat uh, pcm or pcb so uh, yeah <clears throat> say something clear about that uh, i i know the ice entrance exam best because i was part of the actions committee but i mean here at siastra you have people who are also from isc and i so you can generalize it for for mm-hmm. uh, it's not a question of whether If entrance exam, of course, you should prepare whatever you are good at. But the entrance exam for ISR has all components: physics, chemistry, maths, and bio. And at the standard level, your know, maths may seem too difficult. But if you spend little time, like a month, studying it, out of the fifteen questions, you may be able to answer like four or five at the most. So if you are a PCB person, learn a little bit of mathematics, you will be able to do slightly better in the exam. You will answer more questions. If you are a PCM question, same thing. Well, standard. Pick up a biology text. You know, start skimming it. Some things will be interesting. You have to master all of the material. But if some things are interesting, some questions you will be able to answer. That that's uh, you know important. What is the real challenge is after you join one of these institutes. Typically, in the first year, you are supposed to do everything. Um, and so, if you have to be prepared for that. So, for example, in Isar Pune, people will come. Then, in the first year, you have to biology. But if you did have biology, you may struggle a little bit. The instructors try to do everything possible to reach you, but you know the, uh, you have to come with the right mindset that yeah, I am going, I am prepared to new things, and uh, that, that I think is important. True. I know anything about the JE and the NEET? Uh, <laughs> I don't pay attention to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, except for their dates clashing with our uh, with our entrances. Yeah. Some dates. <laughs> uh let's uh but this time i i think this time with the admission uh, there there was a lot of issues students uh, actually the thing is when je neat counseling gets delayed a bit right and most of the students are for je and neat they get seats of either they, they book the seats and later they leave it and uh, yeah. you must have seen yeah, that's it. always an ongoing problem yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh shuffles the ice system and then you know, it's it's quite exactly yes. so for both like for ice itself it's a big challenge for new students to you know take them and then again Correct. train them and for the students who wanted to get ice but they did not get due of you marks and because someone Correct. else took their Correct. seats and later Correct. left yeah. i mean their problem is a lot worse yes yeah. because somebody that seat and now it is closed yeah. so uh, have you like maybe if you would like to share like 
uh, have you guys ever thought of uh, this and what can be the possible solution uh, to this issue i mean yes we thought about it quite a lot i don't think there is a solution because as long as the uh, the je and net is a craze uh, if somebody genuinely wants to do engineering of some sort or wants to do medicine with a doctor good you, know, you should pursue it need to get exam a lot of students tend to do these things simply because they think i'll get a good job later i don't think getting a good job should be necessarily a motivation for what you are choosing to do jobs exist in all fields even basics and in fact you can make your own jobs like you you guys like you start you have the start of the learning so in the same way you, you if you are good at something the jobs will come uh i would not worry too much about that and that's what happens a lot of students they want to science but then they get empty in this counseling round i getting you know this id or whatever it is so okay ab le leta hu sometimes they take it even when the, the stream that they get with that is not something they like they want to do the electronics but they are say civil engineer but only because it's an id they will take it uh, uh, these are real challenges um, i i understand where students come from everybody is a bully in life and so that's what they sort of came for so how we could try to change this mindset that sure the, the civil engineering in some i i is stable but that's also true of iso nice or ice t even that leads to stable life is as a make it through science is is a stable job mm-hmm. it's not true true uh, so so a lot of our struggle also goes uh, to telling people uh, yeah i can imagine thing. i can imagine that yes <laughs> and which is really hard they like how much money i will get after 5 years <laughs> and then we have to explain them what is the whole process uh, you, yeah. you do get a stipend in your phd and you can compare it with so yeah so thank you so much sarav for this wonderful session i have learned a lot and i would really want to stay connected with you and if there absolutely, would be anything we we sayastra or me or any of us would be able to do with the iris thing or or anything you would oh that would that would be wonderful if i if i yeah. can know how guys come give and talk about even your journey as having a startup that that would be very engaging to the teachers yeah and, I, and i will feel clear about doing yeah and fortunately uh, now uh, we are growing so we have about 94000 subscribers now so yeah so we we would be also happy to you know give you a boost or a reach to wider audience yes. all over india yes 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 yeah. so acha then i have to say this vivek you you know that you know now that means with your reach going you have a lot of responsibility on your shoulders uh, you know a lot of these people uh, uh, you are guiding and uh, uh, of course you will do a good job but you know it, it's a, it's a challenge that as you grow you have to make sure that you know you want to answer all their questions sometimes it, i'm sure it may get frustrating also because you know, it's a it's the last yes. number of people and uh, yeah but yeah that's a that's the job that you've chosen it's a, it's a difficult but, job but i'm really happy that you guys are doing this i think it's really the need of the the country the need of the art thank you so much sir. yeah as you said everything is hard actually but we just have to choose what hard thing we want we like to do <laughs> that's 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 right exactly yeah. and everything that you just pick a hard thing you like yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah but choosing unconventional thing you have to convince your family a lot of other things factors are there but at the end yeah exactly. at the end uh, happy at the end you happy that, yeah. that's the big thing yes yes sir so thank you so much for this session we will end the live on youtube now and uh, okay.